one thing I hadn't realised is it became a bit more known and a bit more in the public eye is that in some ways that can feel a lot like being back at school because now anybody who wants to can tell me that they think I look like shit and regularly do. Now obviously social media is one of the main culprits uh, but for me another culprit has always been women's magazines. I hate women's magazines because I don't think they lift us up. I think they push us down. They show us an unrealistic ideal of what they expect us to be rather than embrace us for what we actually are which is quite frankly f***ing glorious. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't like to just complain and do nothing about it. I set up my own online women's magazine. It's called Standard Issue Magazine. Please have a look at it when you get home. Oh, well, bless you. Thank you. Uh, and it's, it, it's for you. It's free and it's for you. And the rule is no bullshit. That is the rule. No bullshit. Because I hate it when women's magazines say things like, we're going to teach you about the thigh gap. And you think, I know what the thigh gap is. It used to be called fucking rickets. <laughs> teach you how to keep a man. I don't need to know how to keep a man. A married one, he's contractually obliged. <laughs> but if this was a film, this would be the bit where there'd be a montage where you'd see how things are improving with my body image. There's no film, but I'll talk you through the montage. I did a few things. The first thing I did, I started to look at my face in the mirror without any makeup on. And I did that a lot, to the point where now, when I look at my face in the mirror without any makeup on, I think... It's just your face. There's nothing wrong with it, which is a huge change for me. Second thing, started to buy clothes online. So no longer do I go into a shop, pick some clothes to try on, take them into a tiny cubicle with an ill-fitting curtain, office lighting, and a fucking circus mirror. <laughs> and ultimately hand them back to a tiny specimen of a woman, like a mouse in hot pants. <laughs> it never says anything, but with her eyes is saying, oh, you're too fat for all the clothes now. <laughs> What I do now is I order them online, they arrive at the house, I try them on, and if they don't fit, I have a fucking biscuit, cos it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> and in the past, whenever the Special K advert came on the telly, you know, oh God, I always think she looks amazing in that swimming costume. You know what I do now when the Special K advert comes on the telly? I go like this. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> you taste like shit. <laughs> Stick to me Frosties, thanks. <laughs> and I'll put some sugar on them and some jam and a fucking Jaffa cake if I want to. Fuck you! <laughs> but I've had a couple of indicators recently that things are improving with my body image. I'll talk you through them. The first one, I've got a friend who's a makeup artist, and I said to her, I get quite bad black rings under my eyes. I often look a lot more tired than I actually am. I said, is there something that you could recommend that would sufficiently cover that up? She said, absolutely. She showed me this little pot of stuff. She said, this is really good. Get one of these. I said, where can I get one of those from? She said, Harvey Nicks. And I thought, couldn't have been fucking boots or super drug, could it? <laughs> could have been Harvey Nicks. I hate those shops. I find them really intimidating. I find them patronising. But I thought, I want this stuff. I'm going to have to go in. But I'm going to make it the quickest transaction they've ever had. I'm just going to go in, you know. Not like that. That looked aggressive, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bring on your patter, bitch. I'm ready. <laughs> taking a photo of the thing so I could show the lady and that's exactly what I did. I went up to the relevant counter and I said to the lady, can I have one of these please love? And I showed her the photo and she said no problem, no problem. And I thought we're halfway there. And she said I've just got a colour match here first. Before I could ask what the fuck colour matching actually was, she had me up on a stool so high I couldn't get off on my own. <laughs> I was facing outwards, like facing the whole shop and I thought oh my god this is so embarrassing, this is mortifying, oh my god everybody's going to be able to say this is so embarrassing. And then I remembered it's Harvey Nicks, it doesn't matter because there's hardly ever anyone in, is there? It's like a museum for handbags. <laughs> so she dabbed the stuff under my eyes, she showed me it in a mirror and I said, you know what, that looks champion, I'll have one of those. She said, no problem, again, no problem. And I thought, surely we're nearly done now. But this is the moment that she chose to wince at my face. Now, I wasn't wearing any other makeup apart from what she just dabbed under my eyes for two reasons. First reason, I was getting used to my face without makeup on and I thought it looked all right. Second reason, I don't know if you know this, but you don't have to wear fucking makeup to go fucking shopping if you don't fucking want to. <laughs> she winced at my face. Fuck knows what expression she was pulling underneath all of her layers of makeup to get that wince to punch its way to the surface. <laughs> she must have been gurning so hard she nearly shot herself. <laughs> She winced at my face and then she said, they said, oh, can I just do the rest of your makeup before you go back out, though, yes? 
And I was furious that she thought it was necessary, so I threw myself off the stool with quite a lot of force. But all I said was, oh, love, I couldn't give less of a shit. <laughs> so that felt good. Second one, I was walking the dog only a few months ago, and a van approached, and the driver of the van was a man, maybe mid-50s, and his window was wound down. And as he approached me, he beeped his horn, beep, 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 and then made this noise. <laughs> That's never happened to me before. My husband said, I want you to think about that, and I want you to genuinely tell me if you think nobody has ever beeped their horn at you in the past. And I had a little think, with a degree of horror, I realised that he was absolutely right. But this is the first time I'd ever allowed it to be a compliment. In the past, when anybody beeped their horn at me, I'd always assumed they were saying, look at the fucking state of her, she's too fat for that dress, because these are exactly the sorts of things that were going on in my own mind. So technically, I suppose it is the first time it's ever happened to me. And I did respond in quite a peculiar manner. So he approached, beep, 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 <laughs> and I went like this. <laughs> I waved at him like I was a small child. <laughs> now, sometimes for fun, for a laugh, for japes, I like to imagine what happened when Lynn from school opened the email I sent her. I like to think that she gathered her family around, her husband who takes them abroad, and her kids, I can't remember their names, posh twat number one and posh twat number two. <laughs> I like to think she gathered them around and she said, Mummy's friend from school, the one off the television, she's replied, let's read the email all together as a family. <laughs> and they open the email and they read the email and her sons go, hold on a minute, were you a bully? <laughs> oh, is this why we have to keep fucking moving all the time? <laughs> I think the thing that I hate about school is very closely linked to the thing that I love about school. The thing I hate about school is the lack of social mobility. That whatever you go in as, especially the senior school, you are labelled as such and you are that for five years and there's nothing you can do about it. I was very much a nerd at school. Give us a cheer. Any other nerds at school? Yeah. Any sporty types? Yeah. Any slags? <laughs> See, that's how unfair it is. You couldn't change. You could try and change. You could be a nerd and think, I'm going to try and become a slag. And you can try, but they'd still be like, yeah, no, she's sucking all those cocks behind the bike sheds, but you're still counting them on an abacus. <laughs> but while that's what I hate about school, what I love about school is that when you leave, all of that disappears. You can do anything you like. You can be anyone you like. You don't even have to be friends with any of those fuckers ever again if you don't want to be. And who knows? Someday, you might be able to peel a satsuma while you're driving a car. <laughs> or do a horn noise with your mouth. Or talk about your bully on stage and then send her the fucking DVD. 